All right, hello and welcome back. It's your boy Hank Hackerson at Hank Hacks Hackers, your favorite system and network attacker. And in today's video, we're going to be going over Splunk Basics. Uh, this is a part of the SOC Level 1 pathway and in the Security Information and Event Management module, so SIM module. And uh, we're going through Splunk, which is actually a very, very big name in cybersecurity analysis and SIM software. So before we dive into the video, as always, I would sincerely appreciate it and it would mean the world to me that if you like any of this content, if you get any value from this channel or from this video, uh, it would mean the world to me if you could like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell and maybe even drop a comment uh, because all of those activities help YouTube algorithm find us and uh, give the channel a little bit more reach so that we can grow the community and help as many people as we possibly can. And there's a, you know, the secondary benefit or maybe even the more important benefit, which is if you turn on the notification and subscribe, you actually get notified the next time a video comes out. And so if you're studying to become a cybersecurity analyst or a penetration tester or ethical hacker or so on and so forth, all of these things actually apply to your studies and to the day-to-day -day stuff that you're gonna be doing uh, as you go about your career. So uh, yeah, it would be a win-win situation. Uh, without further ado, let's jump into the introduction of the room. All right, so Splunk is the, one of the leading SIMs in the market. Uh, just like any other SIM, it allows you to collect logs and parse them and consolidate them, analyze them, uh, correlate and you know put the dots together basically, connect the dots as to what's happening and you can capture logs in real time by connecting to different endpoints. You can uh, upload logs into it, uh, connect to various ports on your network, so on and so forth. So it's, it's pretty robust and it's a very, very useful tool. And we're gonna go over the overview of it, the basic components and how they work, uh, how to ingest logs and how to normalize uh, logs so that you can kind of go through them. But it's it's a very, very robust tool. So. This is literally just an introduction just to kind of get you familiar with the tool and the interface of it and how to upload logs and uh, kind of search through the logs to try to find some basic information. And then we'll get into the deeper stuff as we go to the incident handling with Splunk and investigating with Splunk. So the first thing that we got to do is we got to connect with the lab. And uh, if you've already seen any of these things, you understand what happens. So we click the start machine. Uh, since it's loading a Splunk server, it takes about three to five minutes to start. And then in the meantime, you also want to start your attack box, which is the blue button that comes up here. I've already started both of them. As you see, they're already running. And the attack box has loaded inside of the new uh, tab so that we can kind of look at it like this, make it a little bit easier. Um, and from there, we can actually jump into the different components of Splunk, which is the Splunk forwarder, uh, the Splunk indexer, and then search head to actually search through a lot of these things. And uh, that's kind of the general components of Splunk. But again, there's just a lot more stuff that's available as well. The first question at the bottom asks us, what is the component that's used to collect and send data over Splunk? And that is the forwarder. It forwards uh, information. In other sims, they call this the agent. And so you have the forwarders or the agents in this case this is kind of what it looks like it could be a linux system a windows system it could be a web portal it could be a server it could be a mac os uh, so any of these things could be your endpoints which forward data to uh, splunk so that it can ingest and index it for you and then uh, we will be operating within the indexer today and using some basic uh, search parameters just to kind of see what's going on and if we can find anything and uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the gist of it. So the rest of these exercises we're actually going to be doing inside of the Splunk uh, server, which is this is what it looks like when you just load it and then you start it up. When you first load up Splunk, this is basically what it looks like as you just saw. And then we have three main areas that we're looking at. We have this top black bar up here. We have this left sidebar and then this center section that says explore Splunk. And the top bar, you know, very self-explanatory. You have messages, settings, activity, help, and then find. And then within that, you can 
uh, click on apps uh, for search and reporting. Uh, if you actually click on any of an app, it changes the top section of the bar. So for example, if we went right here and clicked on search and reporting, which is on the left side, this is what changes at the top black bar, right? And then you have the explore Splunk section where you can add data, look at various applications that can operate within Splunk, and then of course the documentation of Splunk. And this is just a very general introduction to the dashboard and you can kind of choose from pre-made dashboards or obviously create your own dashboard. And you can just do that by clicking choose and then it gives you a bunch of different uh, dashboard uh, options that have been created and then you can even customize your own and select from all the different uh, data points that are available. And so if we click the add data tab, which option is used to collect from ports. And so we click on it and then the options show up on the screen. And right here, you see that these are the three different options that we have available and uh, upload from my computer. So files uploaded from the computer, you have files and ports on the platform and you can use HTTP, WMI, TCP, yada, yada, yada. So this is actually the answer that we're looking for and then forward comes from an endpoint that's forwarding data to us. And so the answer to collect data from files and ports would be monitor. And now we're gonna actually add some data and play around with this a little bit. So uh, this is the gist, right? This is where you can source your data, files and directories, network events, IT ops, uh, cloud services, database services, security services, virtualization services, application servers, window sources and other sources. So there's a lot of stuff that you can uh, use as your source that you can feed data into Splunk. Uh, what we are gonna do is we're gonna do add data and we're gonna drop a file from the desktop of our attack box into it. And then from there, we're going to kind of create uh, this little se uh, series of logs that we're gonna be searching through. And then so it says, you know, you get a total of five steps to upload the data. You have the source where we select the actual log, the source type, and it will be what type of logs that we're going to be ingesting. And you'll see what that means. The input settings, the index where the logs are going to be dumped and host name to be associated with them and then review and then done. And you'll be able to actually search through everything and run it. So the host field value, uh, we can change the, uh, it's, it comes pre-filled with a few different things, as you'll see. And then from here, we'll be able to answer some of the questions that they have for us. So let's jump into it. We already clicked on add data. So we're going to click on upload. And from here, we're going to click on select file. You can also drag and drop it. Uh, the file that I'm looking for is inside of my root rooms and Splunk basic directory. And this is the log. So it's a VPN log that comes in JSON format, JSON format. And real quick, you see how it finishes. So we're gonna go here, click next. And then from here, it actually kind of does the source type for us, right? So the source type here is JSON, right? And so you can actually do that. And then it could be saved as VPN logs JSON. So I'll just do VPN logs as the name and then it's already JavaScript, uh, JavaScript object notation, structured, all that stuff is all good. So we can save that and then we can go next. And then from here, we can also change the host field name. So it'll be VPN logs. It's going to be our thing. And from here we should, I mean, the rest of it is kind of just click through and make sure you got everything going, right? And so there's that you get a confirmation and now we can start searching. And so we're going to search through the logs that are loaded for us. And one thing that you'll notice is that it immediately has a query filled in for you. So the source is VPN logs .json, uh, host is VPN logs and the source type is VPN logs. And then everything that we want to do after this is literally going to come after these commands. So we just leave this because this is where you can refer to a bunch of different logs if you've uploaded a bunch of different logs inside of Splunk, right? So we're going to leave this part and then we're going to put all of our queries after the fact. So the first question is going to be how many uh, how many events are presented in the file? 
and then we already have that 2862 events and that is our answer the next question is how many log events are done by user Molina and so if we just go down here we can find something called username so hopefully the screen kind of adjusts there we go so we click on username and then it pops up all this stuff for us and then from here we can look so we have Molina has 60 counts uh, for the events that have attached to her name so we can go back and so Molina has 60 counts uh, what is the name associated with IP 107 uh, 14 18 238 and as I mentioned before we literally are just going to go over here and then you could do quotes uh, and just paste it in there and quotes it's like a really easy way to search for it and then it updates the number of events that we have which in this case would be 26 events and so we go back here and now we have oh I'm sorry what's the name associated with the guy my bad my bad so the name associated with this we can actually see it right here so under each item there's all this information that comes source country source IP so on and so forth and then username associated with is Smith so there we go that's the answer for that uh, what is the number of events that originated from all countries except France? So this is a nice little kind of an advanced uh, search, but not really. So the uh, field that we're looking for is source country, right? So source country is what we're going to search for. And it's going to be as long as it'll type for me. What we're going to do is we're going to do source country and then exclamation equals means it does not equal so source source country does not equal France and then that's this is kind of what it looks like you do that so source country does not equal France meaning show me everything that is not with France and then you press enter and now we have the number right here which is 2814 events which is the answer down here and lastly is how many VPNs are observed by this particular IP and so we copy that IP and we go back and we just repeat the same process I just do that and then I can paste it in here and press enter and it gives me 14 events uh, apart from that there's a bunch of different fields that are available to us so these are the selected fields that we are currently uh, looking at but then there's a bunch of other fields that you could look at so the date can be broken down by a lot of different things you also have the username that you can do, source IP, source country, source state even, uh, the Splunk server that would be attached to. And then at the top of the screen, we have, of course, the, the time. So you can do all time. You can do a range of times that you want to search through. Uh, it shows you the graph of uh, how congested the data was on specific dates. And if you wanted to, you could just click on one of those and it will take you into that and a bunch of different things right so we can search by pattern we can search by statistics and a lot of these things we're going to be looking at a little bit later and then we can of course visualize everything and search by visual visualization uh, which in this case it doesn't really have much so uh, this is basically a very uh, surface level short and sweet introduction to Splunk um, it requires that you set up a Splunk server so that you can actually collect and ingest information and then from there you can either drop logs into it or you could connect endpoints to it that will forward the data to Splunk. And then from here we just literally click on Splunk Enterprise and it takes us all the way back to the home page and it'll show us kind of what we're looking at right here. And uh, you can, if you click on add data one more time, it will show you a history of the stuff that you could have done before. So if I go to upload here and then get to the point that it does, uh, there is a section or you know what, maybe it wasn't here, but there was a section that shows you the history of the data that you had uh, previously accessed and used. And then you can go through the various forms of the data. Maybe it's under search and reporting. And then let's see if we can find wherever it is. And there we go. So search history right here. So search and reporting, search history, and it'll open up a bunch of different things that we did. So it shows me the all of the recent searches that I did. And if I wanted to just start back from the top, I could just go to 
the very very first one that I did and then this was the last exercise that I did before I recorded the video so you can see how some of the information is different it's the same VPN log but I didn't change the host name I just left it as the the basic host name that came with it and the source type was VPN logs because that was the name that I chose at the time and then I was just doing these different search parameters just to see how it looks and so there's a lot of other things that have already been done with this so we could have always clicked on that to search through it but I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves I don't want to kind of jump ahead and uh, and ruin the surprise so to speak so that's pretty much it for this room I know this one was a little bit short and sweet so uh, we are definitely going to do more of a deep dive into Splunk as we uh, go further down the sim pathway so if you liked anything about this uh, video, if you learned anything about this, even the introductory stuff about Splunk, or if you want to just stay tuned and get the rest of the videos that come out from this pathway, I encourage you to like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and maybe even drop a comment. And all of those activities help the YouTube algorithm find the channel so that we can grow the community. But more importantly, if you like and turn on the notification bell, or if you subscribe and turn on the notification bell, it actually notifies you the next time a video comes out from Splunk and then you'll get more information and you can get more advanced with this and so on and so forth. So I do encourage you to subscribe and turn on notification bell. I drop a video at least once a day, sometimes multiple times a day, and we'll try to maintain more of a consistent schedule with that. But at least once a day, you can expect that a video will come out. And uh, currently we're just going down the SOC level one pathway uh, but I've done a lot of videos on Pentest Plus, and we're going to keep getting more and more advanced on the information that we have. So this is your boy Hank Hackerson at Hank Hacks Hackers, your favorite network and system attacker. And if no one else loves you, Hank loves you. Peace, love, and chicken grease. And I will see you in the next room. Later.